Yay! Ding a ling a ling a ling a ling a ling a ling. Ding a ling a ling a ling a ling a ling a ling. All those people coming to see the tall man with the beard, uh, follow me. We're going through this door. We're going hard right, hard left, hard right. Follow me, please. Here we go. Have your tickets ready, please. Tickets, please. Have your tickets ready, please. Tickets, please. Have your tickets ready, please. Tickets, please. Young people, thank heavens for young people. Very nice of you to be here. Lovely to have you. How are you? I hope you have a very pleasant evening. I'm very well, thank you. Good of you to be here. Very nice. Hello, how are you? Very good of you to make it. Oh, some people just squeeze you into their lives, don't they? It's just before showtime and comedian Rod Quantock is playing the role of usher and ticket collector as people arrive for his latest show. Nobody's late tonight. How are you? Lovely to have young people. Oh, bless you, young people. A fixture of the Melbourne comedy scene for over 40 years, many of his fans have aged with him and new faces are always welcomed to Rod's particular brand of activist comedy. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Bugger the Polar Bears. This is serious. Now, it's obviously a show about climate change, and uh, I think, you know, you're here because of that, and you're probably committed uh, to dealing with the issue of anthropomorphically caused climate change. And uh, I'm committed too, and you'd be proud of me, because I actually don't use the microphone. Because I did what a lot of performers never do. I thought about things. Well, I suppose the first thing to say is it's how I make a living. I mean, it's my job to go on stage and make people laugh. And I've got a choice. I can just do silly jokes about underpants and girlfriends and getting locked out of your house and being drunk and having run into the police or whatever. Um, but I left that behind a long, long time ago. Not that it's a good thing or a bad thing, but I just stopped doing that biographical sort of business because my life became very boring and dull. But I also... Um, I took my personal beliefs and I turned them into um, theatre, if you like, and I've been, uh, I've been very passionate about social justice issues and, uh, and general political issues and overall, environmental issues, so it seemed just natural to take them onto the stage. And whether they... In the end, I, I think what I do is I reinforce um, people's values and beliefs who come to the show. My shows are never going to get on television. They're never going to. I'm never going to be um, a regular guest on the new Hey Hey at Saturday, for instance. I'm just. I've been pigeonholed as that left-wing loony comedian. Um, but I do it because I think it needs to be said, and I think the voices, the, the voices that compete in the world of politics, is those voices that are amplified by money and political power and they scream and yell and they get into every nook and cranny of life and down in little back streets there are people like me going, oh, yeah, but it could be different, but it might be wrong. And I think, you know, you just have to make that noise uh, within the limits of uh, the influence that you have. That's the doomsday scenario. Bushfires every year in Victoria. 2050, that could happen by. And as few as 10% of the current population of the world left alive by the end of the century. That's the doomsday scenario predicted by not Steve Fielding, not Andrew Bolt, but 200 of the top climate scientists in the world. Now, that is chilling. Are you chilled? I know, I know it's fucking cold in here anyway, but are you chilled? <laughs> could you tell me what page that was on? Page 74 of the Sunday Herald Sun, the most important message that humanity has ever been sent and they put it on page 70. It wasn't even in the age that day. And you know what the headline was that day on the Sunday Herald Sun? Do you know what the headline was? It wasn't we're all going to die unless we stop polluting the atmosphere. It was make... Lou, a legend now. Now, most people, and you, know, you look at them over there, walking past Nando's and Subway and going up and down the street, and you tell them one degree, and they don't think much about it. So we welcome you here today. Um, we thank you very, very much uh, for your support. This is beyond important. It's probably even beyond an emergency. It is now on the verge of a disaster, and those of you... Whether it's speaking at rallies or creating comedy routines out of events like the brutal treatment of protesters at the World Economic Forum, Rod has made a career out of standing up to be counted, which is why when he says climate change is the greatest issue humanity has ever faced, we should be listening. ..don't comprehend it. And over the next three or four hours, um, I want to... <laughs> 
I want to introduce you to the subtleties and the science of climate change. Uh, we're, we're going to discuss the physics, the chemistry, the biology, the paleontology, uh, the meteorology, the climatology. The, we're going to discuss every aspect of climate change so that when you leave here this evening, my aim is that you will be apoplectic with fear. <laughs> you will be, as I said on the poster, scared shitless by the concept of climate change. That's my <laughs> While Rod relies on laughter to convey serious social messages, the levels of fear and self-denial that climate change evokes in us makes it an especially challenging prospect to deliver the comedy that the audience has come to see. That's the contract, you're, and I'm always very conscious of, of the contract you have with your audience to be funny. And often that's difficult. I mean, the current show's been very difficult to make funny because it's, not, it's the least funny topic in the whole of human history. <laughs> And who will we make it out to?